Now, what is this? Let's do it. He gave us a sound like, yeah, uh -oh. jump the line a little bit. Uh -oh. I'm ready? He doesn't follow the rules. Uh, no. <laughs> How are you, Chelsea? I'm good. I'm yeah. good. We um, are going to get started. We have okay. Boston College here now, and we are joined by head coach Eric Johnson and sophomore guard Taylor Ortlep. Um, and coach, let's just start uh, recapping the season, if you would, for us. Last year finished 9-21 and overall. Um, what were your thoughts on last season in, in terms of looking ahead to this year? So our, uh, we have to have a hashtag, right? So uh, one of my favorite quotes is actually from Gandhi, which is, you know, be, be the change you want to see in the world, right? So our hashtag is be the change. And we've talked a lot about what's, how do you flip 21 losses to 21 wins? And what are the things, right? You know, and again, you guys will all look at talent and returning scores and all these kinds of things. Um, we know that the things that held us back from winning some of those games when you're uh, up in the last three minutes at Virginia, up in the last three minutes at Miami, uh, has everything to do with our toughness, our togetherness, the way we practice every day. And look, we weren't tough enough mentally, emotionally. Uh, our connections, our culture wasn't strong enough to be able to get over the hump in those games. And those are things that we can affect every day. And so Taylor and her teammates uh, have really been about being the change you want to see in the world. We're not just going to change because, oh, we've learned those lessons and, oh, uh, we'll be a little bit better this year because we're a year older. We had three freshmen that played a ton of minutes. Uh, they're showing much more leadership. No, we have to make conscious change. And, uh, and I've really been proud of this team, of the way that they've flipped that switch. And we're all about changing 21 losses into 21 wins. You called me out. I'm going to ask you now about losing your top two scorers from last year um, and just how that will affect it. But Mariella Fasula and Kelly Hughes um, will not be back this year. Who can we expect to sort of fill in those roles? Yeah, look, you know, and that's my job as a coach is to put your players in the best positions, right? So last year you mentioned, uh, you know, two amazing scores. Mariella, one of the best low post scorers in the country. Uh, Kelly Hughes, one of the best uh, perimeter shooters in the country. Um, but until Taylor came back, uh, and really she only started the last 12 games of the season, uh, we didn't really have a lot of diversity in the way we played. We were pretty, pretty one-dimensional. We're going to throw the ball in the post. We're going to kick it out to shots, right? Um, I think we're going to be a whole lot more fun to watch this year. Um, Taylor being healthy, uh, our two freshman guards in Sydney Lowry and Milan, uh, Milan Bolden Morris, um, along with uh, Georgia Pino, who's, who's really brought her game along. Um, we've got a couple, you know, Marty Mosetti. Uh, we've got a, 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 a fifth-year senior, Andy Anastas, who can all put the ball on the floor and attack. And when, I think our biggest weakness offensively last year was we really, we really didn't put the ball on the floor a lot until Taylor came back. So everything was off throwing the ball in, throwing it out, and, and we were pretty easy to, to know what was coming, right? This group's going to be very, very different. Um, and so we've, we've gone back to playing – uh, basketball and changing our offense back to the, the way, honestly, if you remember us from a couple years ago with Nicole Boudreau and some mm -hmm. other players um, who could really put the ball on the floor and create shots for each other. Um, so I think you're going to see a lot more of the ball movement, the drive and dish, the, the wide open floor, uh, which I'm loving. I'm, lo I'm loving that. We're going to be a lot more balanced. Uh, we've got a lot more, um, a lot more firepower, especially on the perimeter. Um, and, you know, and Emma Guy has really stepped up. Uh, she had a, a good freshman year last year, and um, I think you're going to see a lot of scoring from her inside. So, uh, look, we're going to be a lot more fun to watch. It's certainly a, a really fun team to coach, and uh, I think it's going to be exciting. And losing the size scoring and rebounding in Fasula that you do, how I mean, does that sort of redefine the roles of Emma Guy and Katie Quan and even Georgia Pinot inside yeah, for them? Yeah, absolutely, right? I mean, uh, Every year, right, you're going to have departures through graduation or, you know, in the age of transfers, right? I mean, you know, we can look around this league. We can look around the country of some, uh, you know, really uh, talented players that have changed programs. Um, and, and, look, you know, our, our job is to, to, to meld our system to whatever the talent is we have. The good news is I've got really good talent. Um, and, you know, the, what I love about this team is the 21 losses last year weren't about talent. Uh, you know, our, our culture has needed to come a long way. Leadership. Uh, the way our kids buy in, the way they play together, the way they treat each other, uh, needed to change, right? Yeah, absolutely needed to change. And that's where 21 losses came from. Well, that's how you're going to flip it to 21 wins. And anyone who's coached the game, someone like you who's been in, been in the locker room, you know how much that means. You play harder when you know that these are your sisters and they're going to, you know, they're going to sacrifice for you, right? And, and as a coach, you're trying so hard to build that. 
And it's very different when you can get off your soapbox and stop preaching and just start watching it grow. And, and, uh, and again, I'm just, I'm, I'm proud of this group. And, uh, and I think, again, I think we're going to surprise a lot of people. I, I certainly saw the preseason polls, Chelsea, and I know. And, and I, don't, I don't blame anybody for where they picked us. We finished last. We lost our two leading scores. Why wouldn't you pick us last, right? The only reason is if you were in our locker room and you're not yet, right? So I can't wait for the season to start and, uh, and we can start showing people all the work that these guys have done because I'm really proud of them. Yeah, and, and you'll be relying heavily on, on a sophomore kind of core group that had a ton of playing experience last year in Emma Guy, Georgia Pinot, and in Taylor. Uh, how do you think that experience uh, and that sort of ownership and walking through that they'll use as confidence and even motivation going into this year? Right, and again, I have a different perspective from everybody in this room because I'm watching that every day, right? I just, you just heard me talk about Emma Guy's confidence. Uh, it, for those of you who watched her play as a freshman, she had great moments. But often it was a bit of a roller coaster, just mentally, like, oh, my confidence. I missed a layup. I'm not sure what I should do next, right? Emma looks, her shoulders are back. Oh, I missed that layup. She's beating everybody the ball, going and getting it, sprinting it back and down on defense. Uh, you know, Georgia Pinot uh, just has, has made so many additions to her game. Uh, having Taylor be able to have all that experience of playing. I mean, being a, a freshman point guard in the ACC is like being a rookie quarterback in the NFL, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's just you see more pressure packages and, and, and just different kinds of defense and pressure. And Taylor got trial by fire, right? And you're talking about, you know, a kid who ended up being our second leading scorer in, in the last 12 games of the season when she became our starter. Um, you know, and, and was the leading assist maker of all the freshmen in the ACC. And these are the top recruits in the nation, right? Georgia and, and Emma, who you both mentioned, uh, were among the top freshmen in the conference as well in scoring, as well as rebounding and block shots. So here's some kids that have proven already, and they know they can play. They know they've made their mistakes. They've worked through some of those things. They're great, mentor for our, great mentors for two of our freshmen who are going to have to play a lot of minutes this year as well and are bringing a lot of things to the table already. So we've got a really good group, Chelsea. You're going you're gonna to like watching them play. Yeah, and tell us more. I mean, you mentioned those two freshmen that you have coming in, um, but how has their transition been to the collegiate level and chemistry-wise sure. so far? I, I, and I'm glad you asked me that question because, um, you know, this is something we talk about in coaching or just in education all the time. Um, that Look, talent is important, and these are two talented young individuals that we're talking about, and Sidney Lowry and, and Milan Bolden Morris. But what, what stands them apart more than their talent is I've been coaching for 25 years now, and these might be the two most mature, just put together freshmen. And I, just an example, you, you send them an email in their senior year of high school to fill, fill out something for the clearinghouse, uh, you know, get this in for admissions, right? They return the email. Not mom, not, oh, I don't know, I think my, my, my dad might have done that. They follow up. Coach Hawkins, uh, did you get that email? Did I, everything get done correctly? Um, it, they're just put together. And so now when you get on the court, that's what coaching them is like, right? Shoulders are back. Okay, okay, that's what you need me to do, coach? And then they go messed up because they're freshmen, right? They don't know which way their left foot's supposed to go and their right foot. But now when you correct them, no, Sid, this is what you need to do. Okay, coach, yeah, I got you. Maybe one good follow-up question and away we go. It's amazing what you can accomplish when you're not dealing with, oh, but I thought, or I'll make an excuse or blame somebody else. These these kids have been parented well, and I, I owe their parents a lot of thanks. Um, and they're great role models for everybody else on the team already as freshmen. And I wanted to ask about another player on the roster this year, graduate student, um, Andy Anastos, um, played hockey for yeah. the Eagles um, from 2013 to 2017 and was a two-time captain. Yeah. What's her role on the team? <laughs> so Andy's a great story. Uh, and it's an Andy Anastas. Anastas. Yep. Um, so her father was actually the head coach at Michigan State for men's hockey. So here's a, here's a coach's kid. Um, she first came to me this spring when she was graduating, uh, finishing her hockey career, She'd gone to a couple frozen fours, been a two-time captain. And she said, Coach, I know your numbers are going to be a little low this year. You know, are you interested in having me on the team? A hockey kid? Like, you know, are you skating around on ice? And you, were you know, so I went to, I went to the, um, the hockey staff, and I just said, hey, what about this Andy kid? They're falling over themselves with praise about her character, about her leadership. And they're saying, look, we've got Olympians walking out the door uh, from graduation, and Andy's the one we're most worried about replacing because we, her locker room presence, her presence on the bench is just amazing. And I'm going, man, I, all right, I, that sounds like a pretty good thing. So we actually brought Andy in, tried her out, um, and she came to summer school with our team. She got voted a captain this fall. And on the court, here's a kid who hasn't played basketball for four years. She's making plays left and right against our practice guys. Zero fear. 
She's so mature. Um, and again, she, along with our other seniors, and you mentioned Katie Quant, Martina Mosetti, and Rachel, and Rachel Gartner, um, have really adopted, again, a, a service mentality. It's not about me. It's not about, oh, what's my senior year going to be like? It's how can I give? How can I make this team better? And Andy's had a great impact on that culture that we've talked about. And uh, again, I'm, I'm thrilled to have her. Yeah. Also, adding to the team or program, you brought in assistant coach Latera King. Um, came from Monmouth prior to that, was a graduate assistant at Florida State. What has she brought to your staff? Yeah, so look, I, I've got two of the most experienced uh, professionals in the country, and Yvonne Hawkins and, and Tom Garrick on our staff, coach at every level from the NBA to, you know, uh, they're incredible mentors. And, and Latara is one of the best, most brightest young coaches. She's brought a ton of energy to our recruiting. Um, she really, really, uh, uh, the players relate to her very, very well, um, but she's wise beyond her years. So, I mean, she's ready to jump in. She's been watching film with the freshmen. Uh, she's been mentoring those two young wing players and done a great job. Uh, and she's just a pleasure to work with every day. So I, I'm blessed to have a, an unbelievable staff. They make me look good every day. And, and uh, you know, we're really thrilled to have Latara aboard. Is there a, sort of for her coming from Florida State as a graduate assistant, is there a familiarity with the ACC that you've noticed? Yeah, look, I mean, you know the coaching business, right? We've all worked with each other at some point, right? There's, there's less and six degrees of separation between all of us, right? So Coach Semarao and I both went to University of California, San Diego, if you didn't know that. And Latara worked there, and so did my director of operations. We all know each other, Chelsea. And, and uh, you know, certainly um, her Florida State uh, experience was excellent. Sue taught her a lot. She was very well mentored. Um, she's an incredible worker. And, uh, of course, she'll, she'll bring a lot of that great experience to us. And Taylor, for you, um, we talked about new assistant coach, addition of freshmen, losing some key players, uh, but what has the dynamic of the team been like adjusting to all of those transitions so far this summer and into preseason? Yeah, definitely losing a bunch of players and g gaining two new freshmen in our fifth year in Andy. It's been a very different team, but I think our team dynamics have really grown and I'm really, like, I'm really proud of where we are at the moment in terms of culture-wise. We really appreciate one another. We push each other to our limits. And we have like a connection where we can hold each other accountable. We can call people out. And we respect each other enough to be like, all right, I got you. Like, I'm going to fix that, change our, change our ways, and continue on. And I think that's really important to have in... So we have, like you said, we lost players. We have a small amount of people. We can't be in the locker room fighting with each other. We can't be disagreeing with each other. We just have to... Take it on, take on the board what everyone is saying and go with it. And I think that's been a major part of our growth this preseason. Uh, especially finishing the season in that light, latter half uh, in the starting position that you had. How did that build confidence, that experience that you had that will translate over into this year for you, your sophomore year? Um, definitely as I played more over my 12 games in the ACC and I gained a lot of different experiences. I guess I was put under different pressures in different games and I had to find my way out of it really I, there was no backing down so knowing like being able to do that and knowing that I had the ability to take control and lead my team yeah we didn't win some of the games that we should have and but I think being in that experience and getting a feel for what that is has given me the ability to grow and actually acknowledge what what I needed to work on in my game and how to come back better this year. Losing the top two three-point shooters from last year's team, do you feel like you'll be a little bit more heavily relied on in that position from behind the arc? Yeah, definitely. I mean, as a scoring point guard, I'm always looking to get to the board or score, score in some sort of way. But I'm also in the team we have, able to facilitate for my other four players on the court. Everyone else on the team has the ability to score. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Well, thank you, guys. Are there any questions in here? No? All right. Well, thank you guys. Great. Appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you. Thank you. We will have Clemson up next.